So Searle makes the claim that if you believe the strong AI people, then you, are, you have to be a dualist about the mind, and it's only if you agree with Searle that you can avoid dualism. So uh, first, briefly, dualism is the idea that there's some sort of uh, separation between mind and body. Humans are not our bodies, or we're not entirely our bodies. We've seen dualism already in Swinburne. So Swinburne has a dualist theory of personal identity, but of course if you have a dualist theory of personal identity, you have to think that humans are not just uh, bodies, we're also minds. Uh, Swinburne calls it a soul. The soul is sort of our mind. And so uh, dualism is a view that some people have, other people don't have. Uh, and let's look at why, uh, why Searle thinks that uh, to believe in strong AI, uh, you have to be a dualist. And this will make more sense if you also first watch the video I have explaining functionalism. Uh, Searle is going to say sort of the same thing about functionalism that he says about strong AI, which is that functionalism is really a form of dualism. And if you want to not be a dualist, uh, you have to not be a functionalist. So he says, this residual operationalism is joined to a residual form of dualism. So forget, oper oper forget operationalism for now, we're just looking at the dualism. Indeed, strong AI only makes sense given the dualistic assumption that where the mind is concerned, the brain doesn't matter. In strong AI and in functionalism as well, what matters are programs, and programs are independent of their realization in machines. Indeed, as far as AI is concerned, the same program could be realized by an electronic, world, an electronic machine, a Cartesian mental substance, or a Hegelian world spirit. So the thought is, according to strong AI, or to the functionalist, what is it to have a mind? Well, it's to carry out certain functions. It's to do certain sorts of things. You don't need a brain. A robot could do it. And so the thought is that, well, really what matters is the sort of computer program, the correct computer program. That's the mind. And that's separate from the body. It's separate from your brain. You could put it in different bodies. You could put it in a robot. You could put it in a person. You could put it in really anything. Whatever runs the computer program, that would be conscious. The single most surprising discovery that I have made in discussing these issues is that many AI workers are quite shocked by my idea that actual human mental phenomena might be dependent on actual physical chemical properties of actual human brains. But if you think about it for a minute, you can see that I should not have been surprised, for unless you accept some form of dualism, the strong AI project hasn't got a chance. The project is to reproduce and explain the mental by designing programs, but unless the mind is not only conceptually but empirically independent of the brain, you couldn't carry out the project, for the program is completely independent of any realization. So the thought is, look, strong AI says your mind is not stuck in your brain, your mind is like a computer program and you can run it on a robot, for instance, and so that has to mean that what the mind is is the program, and the program is not a physical thing, uh, the physical thing is just what you're running the program on. Unless you believe that the mind is separable from the brain, both conceptually and empirically, dualism in a strong form, you cannot hope to reproduce the mental by writing and running programs, since programs must be independent of brains or any other particular forms of instantiation. So if you think about a program, you can run it on uh, any sort of physical thing you want. So if I write a computer program, I can run it on this computer or that computer or some other computer. If I write a program that's conscious, I can run it on this computer or that computer any other computer I install it on. So it's not stuck to somebody the way that my consciousness is stuck to my brain, according to Searle. If mental operations consist in computational operations on formal symbols, then it follows that they have no interesting connection with the brain. The only connection would be that the brain just happens to be one of the indefinitely many types of machines capable of instantiating the program. This form of dualism is not the traditional Cartesian variety that claims there are two sorts of substances, but it is Cartesian in the sense that it insists that what is specifically mental about the mind has no intrinsic connection with the actual properties of the brain. So Cartesian refers to Descartes, who's a famous dualist philosopher. Um, I think we saw a bit of that in Swinburne, but I can't remember. The thought is that uh, according to the strong AI people or the functionalist, it's not like the program is a separate sort of mental substance like the soul. So Swinburne has a separate substance, which is the soul substance. We're not saying that. But uh, we are saying that the mental is sort of uh, not uh, based on the physical thing that it runs on, but rather it's a sort of, uh, it's a program, it's a series of instructions, and whatever runs the series of instructions, it has this mind. Uh, and so uh, that is what Searle calls 
dualism. And so he thinks if you want to believe that the mind is entirely physical, you have to reject strong AI, you have to reject functionalism, you have to agree with Searle that the mind is just a product of the brain.